Hi, everybody. How are you doing this evening? I'm Jeanette from Boricua Sewing and Crafts. Welcome if you're new to my channel. And for those that are returning, as always, love to see you guys. So um, anyway, I, I just want to let you guys know for this Friday, one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to talk about the Embrilliant software, okay? Uh, someone had posted on our Facebook group that they were... Um, looking to upgrade in brilliance and they didn't know how to do it and i said that as soon as i got home that i was going to create a video to show you guys how exactly how to do it now unfortunately i got really like busy and stuff so i was not able to do that video so i figured this would be a perfect opportunity to show you guys how to upgrade in brilliance and also talk a little bit more about in brilliance and show you guys um, what versions, you know, what what type of modules I have in Brilliance, why I got them, how I use them. Um, so that way, you know, hopefully you guys can learn something that I usually do and stuff. And it could also help you decide whether this is the software that is right for you. OK, so, um, you know, there are a lot of great embroidery software out there. Um, there are two others that I hear about a lot. Um, I'm not familiar with them, but um, I do know that a lot of people do use them. And the other two that I, I hear a lot about is um, one's called Hatch. Um, and I know that John Deere is, um, he's really big in the embroidery world and he uses Hatch. And the other one is So What Pro. So What Pro. And E from the Baby Booty, she uses um, that program. I actually like um, Embrillance Essentials. Um, I find it easy to use, but I will tell you up front, the main factor that drove me really to use in Essentials, you know, Embrillance is that I'm a Mac user, okay? So when you look at a lot of these, um, you know, embroidery software, a lot of them run on a Windows machine. And, you know, um, I'm not a Windows user. I mean, I do use Windows for my job, but, you know, me personally, my whole home is all Macs and Apple products. So um, Hatch and So What Pro was not something that runs on a Mac. Um, you can buy um, some software to kind of like, you know, put on your Mac so that you can run Windows software, but I just wasn't willing to do that. So it's not something that I wanted to do. And then when I started looking into um, in Brilliance, I saw that, um, sorry, I got something in my eye now. Um, when I looked into in Brilliance, I saw that it really did seem pretty easy to use. And one of the things that I really liked um, also about in Brilliance was there's a, so much support out there. There are a lot of videos out there that can show you how to use in brilliance whenever you get stuck or anything like that i've always gone to youtube and i've always searched on how to merge file how to remove stitches how to increase um, the thickness of fonts using in brilliance and i was always able to find answers out there and the support was you know a, you know from people out there has really been really good um, I have reached out to in Brilliance um, for support as well. Um, you know, they they seem to be okay. Um, I, I have to be honest, I can't really like rave, rave, rave about them because my personal experience has been me asking them questions and them referring me. They've always referred me to the, the manuals that are in their knowledge base. And to be honest, you know, I've been there, done that. And if if that didn't explain it, I was kind of hoping for them to kind of like take the extra steps. So um, actually, I had to actually, you know, I don't know, I guess my grading system, okay, when it comes to support from them, um, it would kind of like be like a B kind of, you know. Um, but in actuality, a lot of times when I have needed to get something done, a lot of my learning has come from people that have done a lot of um soft you know um you know videos on how to work with the software and i am actually in all honesty i am really really just a um hands you know visual learner so when watching the videos and seeing where people actually click 
and them explaining why they're clicking in a certain area, that's really what helps me to learn. So, you know, it's just something that, you know, I kind of like took into account when I was looking into different embroidery software. So this is something that really kind of like fit the bill for me and stuff. So, but, you know, if you are a Windows user, you know, I mean, I like Imbruence. I really do. And, I, you know, it, but, you know, it can be kind of pricey because you start off with Imbruence Essentials. Then as time goes on, you can go ahead and purchase the other modules of the suite. If that's something that you need to do, you could even do digitizing with the brilliance. But of course, to do digitizing, you would have to go ahead and you would have to um, invest in the stitch artist modules. Um, but, you know, they are other software uh, embroidery, you know, embroidery softwares out there that are just as good that I hear a lot of people really raving about. And it doesn't hurt, you know, the way I look at it, just like when people tell me, oh, Janae, I want to buy a multi-needle machine. Which one should I buy? There's just so many different options out there. You know, everyone has their own, their own way of learning and everyone has their own needs, right? So you just have to like really look at what out there and see what really fits you. OK, just like if you were buying a multi needle embroidery machine, you have to look at that machine. You got to see what kind of capabilities that machine um, provides and also think about how you plan on using that machine. So that would help you to make the decision as to what is it that's going to fill your needs, not just now, but also in your future. OK, I would do the same thing as if you were looking at embroidery software. OK. Look to see what it is that you're trying to do. See what um, capabilities each of the software provides. Look at the type of learning curve that you're looking at. Also look at different support options that are out there, okay? Like I said, you know, when I personally reached out to Embrilliance for certain, um, you know, questions about Embrilliance and stuff, I didn't find them to be like super, super helpful, um, but, you know, I was able to get around it. And, but thankfully, you know, there is so many people that use this product and there's so many videos out there that, to be honest, it's, it's just something that it, it wasn't a big deal, okay? It wasn't like a showstopper, okay? So, you know, just something I just wanted to put out there and stuff. Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, I see there are more people now that has gotten on the chat. And I do always like to say hi to everybody. Just so that you guys know, also my cousin Betty came to visit me from New York. So she is monitoring the chat room. She's making sure that, um, you know, she's going to make sure that I, I'm able to answer all the questions for you guys. All right. And she's also going to watch my time. Okay, because I know that the, I think the past couple of Saturdays, I talk so much that I pass nine o'clock and I go over and I let me tell you, I really appreciate that you guys like hang in there with me. <laughs> so, you know, but she's going to monitor my time to make sure because, you know, I, I know you guys, it's the weekend, it's Friday and I know you guys want to like do your thing and have fun and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I respect your time and all that kind of stuff, you know. So let's get right into it. Okay. Now I am going to share my screen because one of the things that happened in the um the facebook group where somebody came out and said hey you know how do you upgrade in brilliance essentials okay so i went to the in brilliance website and i was able to see what was the latest version and i even noticed that me myself i'm not even upgraded to the latest version so i figured while i have you guys on here live i can show you exactly how i am doing it so that way you guys can know how to do it because i know there was some kind of confusion so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share my screen um, so that way you guys can see exactly what I am doing. So um, I am going to go right in here into In Brilliance. And um, as you can see, hopefully um, the screen is up. OK, yep, you guys do see it. All right, awesome. OK, so what I'm going to do is what happened? Oh, my, my cousin needs a pen. I said, you can say something. <laughs> she, she's shy. She don't want to say nothing. Okay, here we go. All right, so she's going to, I guess she's going to write down the questions and all that kind of stuff, maybe. Oh, names. Okay, all right. So anyway, 
I don't know what she's doing. Anyway, okay, we're going back to embryos. Let me show you guys how um how to upgrade to embryos. So right now, here is the home website of embryos. Right, you get there at embryos.com. Now, how do you know if you have the uh the latest versions. Now, if you go to the top, you see it has home store, contact us, account, and downloads. Click on downloads, okay? Now, on the downloads is where you're going to see the different versions of all the software. Now, if you scroll all the way to the bottom of this page, okay, and I'm scrolling down. All right, here you go. Right here it says, looking for something else okay so here is has the platform latest versions all right now here it has the older versions and um i don't know what what this uh flash air thing is but okay right here it has platform older versions okay so i guess the right here has the latest version there you go that's the one testing improvements and bug fixes so I know that I checked my brilliance, okay? And um, what I'm going to do is let me take this out, okay? And I'm going to show you how to check how you go into your brilliance and how you know the what latest software you have, okay? So as you can see, um, let me see, how do I do this? All right, let's go into in brilliance now. All right. Hold on, guys. I'm trying to figure out how do I eat. Okay, this is not it. This isn't working. All right. Well, anyway, when you get to in brilliance, I know you do in brilliance about. Okay. Um, I don't know why it's not. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Okay, here you go. So let me make this a little smaller so that way you guys can see what I see. All right, so over okay, um, I was working on a design for my cousin. Okay, Jeanette, so we're saying twice that your screen is blurry. Oh, it's blurry? Yeah. Okay, is it blurry now? Well, Michelle Rose and Crane. Yeah. Saying that twice. Oh, okay. Okay, well, try to follow as I say. I'm hoping, because I know I'm changing a lot of screens, um, you know, so it, it might blur a little bit when I change the screen. So hopefully it looks pretty uh, steady right now, okay? If it doesn't look steady, guys, just say it in the chat. Betty will let me know, okay? All right, so, um, well, here we are in Brilliance. Okay, now if you look when you once you pop up in Brilliance, you're gonna see on the left hand side it's gonna say in Brilliance, and then there's when you click on it, it's gonna say about in Brilliance. Now, when you go ahead and you click about in Brilliance, that is where you're gonna know what the latest version you are running on your machine. So here, as you can see, my bundle right now, I'm running version. 1.172 and when we were at the in brilliance website the latest version is 1.173 so as you can see i'm up for an upgrade okay so what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade my in brilliance all right so what i'm going to do is i am right now going to shut down and i'm going to quit my in brilliance and i'll save that i won't save that Okay, and let me just get rid of all this stuff here too. Sorry, guys. All right, there we go. We shut all this down. All right, so now we are going back into in brilliance. And let me open this up a little bit here. Okay, so as you can see right here in in brilliance, um, the software that I had was 1.172. The latest that they say here that they have for Windows and for Mac is 1.173, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click on this. And as you can see at the bottom, it automatically downloads the package, right? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open it, okay? And as you can see on my Mac, okay? Cause I don't have a Windows machine. I'm sure that in the Windows version, it's a little similar to this, 
but um, I'm doing this on a Mac. So as you can see, it says, welcome to Embrilliance, and it's an installer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit continue, and it's in English, and I'm going to, you know, it's telling you about the license. You're going to continue, and of course, I'm going to agree, and then here it's telling me where it's going to install it. So I'm just going to say continue, and I'm going to hit install. And then, of course, I have to put my password because I, I have my Mac set up so that every time I install something, I have to put in the password. And then there you go. Installation was successful. Done. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this. And it's I always move my installers to the trash. So I'm going to trash the installer. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to relaunch um, in Brilliance Essentials. And there you go. It, it did relaunch. I got um, it already relaunched it. And hopefully when I go over here to in Brilliance and I hit about in Brilliance, voila, here you go. Here is version 1.173. So I'm finished. See, it's that simple. It really is. And I, I don't even think we took a, a whole two minutes to do this. So that is how you upgrade the um, software for in Brilliance for those that, you know, were a little confused. And, you know, and just also want you guys to know, totally understand why you can be confused because, you know, when you go to the Embrilliance website and if you look right here, you see that there is a lot of, you know, information. So it can really, really confuse you. Now, another thing also that I want to mention to you as well, okay, is that here they also have Embrilliance Thumbnailer. Now, thumbnail thumbnailer is um is is in brilliance, but it's a it's a certain module, and what it does is it helps you to look at um you know embroidery files in a certain in a window. So um here it has the latest um one is a two point two nine. I mean two point two point nine nine. So if your thumbnail um uh, oh and for the Mac. Carolina and Big Sur. Okay, they got a 3.10. So just to just let you guys know, if you if you have thumbnailer, you may want to do the same thing where you go ahead and you install this, and then it'll just upgrade your, your thumbnailer automatically as well. Okay. So, you know, this is how you do it and stuff. So I just wanted to uh show you guys. Now, for this, um, I also wanted to show you about, um, you know, tell you a little bit about Embrilliance and also tell you about what is it that I use it for, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Embrilliance just so that we could talk about it a little bit. But I also have the Embrilliance information site on the back of it as well, okay? Now, let's, let's go to their website, though, because I want to... Uh, talk about it for a little bit. All right. So let's go over to their home. Um, and I will going to tell you something about their website here. Okay. Um, here under here in the um, left hand side, you see that they have products right now. Wait, if you plan on using in brilliance as your software, the first module that you will start with is the essentials. Okay. Essentials is where you are able to merge designs and put in fonts and open up files and, you know, adjust the size a little bit and stuff like that. Now, if you want to do something like add knockdown stitches, okay, to designs for like, let's say that you have like really fluffy uh, bath towels and they have like a lot of fur or something like that, you're always going to want to add uh, knockdown stitches. And as I mentioned before in the past, if you don't have um, in brilliance or any type of embroidery software to add knockdown stitches, that's not a problem. You can always buy embossed files. Embossed files are really nice. And all you have to do is just put the lettering on top of it. Okay. So um, I, I just to let you guys know, the ones that I have, okay, that I have purchased is I purchased essentials. I purchased Enthusiast, which has the knockdown stitches. I also have the Density Repair Kit. And the Density Repair Kit is really useful because it helps you to take care of any unnecessary stitches in your design. So if you are big in merging a lot of designs, which is something that I do a lot, um, the Density Repair Kit is really, really cool. 
Um, I also do have the thumbnailer and the thumbnailer is something that, you know, it just helps you to look at the embroidery files to look at the actual picture. Um, be before having thumbnailer, what I used to do is I would have to open up every individual file for me to see what design it was. Um, but now that I've gotten a little better at naming my, my uh, embroidery files, um, I've been, I have not been using it as often as I have in the past. Okay. Um, and you know, that's another thing too. Let me, let me talk to you guys a little bit about that because I know a lot of you guys come on and say, Hey, Jeanette, how do you organize your embroidery files? Okay. So, um, because I'm sharing my whole screen, let me show you guys a little bit of sections on, of my, uh, of, of my, uh, machine and how I do things. Okay. Here I have like um, Etsy embroidery files. Let me see where it's okay. Here we go. Uh, this is um, Unique Designs for You LLC embroidery files. Now, one of the things that I do is that I kind of characterize them as to what they are. Like, for instance, if there are like um, kids' designs, kitchen designs, and stuff. Um, you know, for birthday shirts and stuff, I kind of put them in the, the appropriate place. A lot of times when you are downloading files, and if you go to my download section, you'll see sometimes what happens is when you download files, when you buy them, they kind of download it and they put some kind of funky name in the uh, folder, right? Like these are some that I previously purchased. So let's take a look at these. Now, it's, these are little alphabets, Christmas alphabets, okay? that I had just recently purchased. Let me open one of them so you can see. This is what it is, okay? So you see that it's like a W and stuff. So I kind of bought these because I thought these would be like really gorgeous for the dinner napkins, right? So because I know that these are fonts, Christmas fonts, right? So what I would do is, this is what I do. When I downloaded it, this was the name that it gave it. So what I do is I will go ahead and I will rename this and I will call it, Christmas fonts for napkins. There you go. So I know automatically that when I go in there, that's what I'm looking for. Okay. Now let's look at another one. All right. Um, let's see the one below it. This is another one, really cute design that I bought recently. And what it is, is a Christmas ornament. I thought these were really cute for dinner napkins too. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll look at that. And then usually I, I thought, this would be really cute. And I recently did that on a dinner napkin. I want to show you guys um, what it looked like. Um, and let me uh, let me remove so I can get in. What what happened? You got two questions? Yes, we do have our guest Marge now. Uh -huh. She's asking if you have found a brilliance um, the free Halloween files. Oh, no, I have not. The Halloween. Oh, and Brilliance has free files? That's what she stated. Oh, then you guys better get your files and stuff. Um, I have not been, you know, I honestly have not been going out looking for the free files. You know, I've been buying my stuff. And, you know, and I tell you guys to be going to all these websites and download all these free files. But I have not had the time to do them myself and stuff. But, um. Yes, and we have another guest asking, uh -huh. I love handmade stuff. Does this software that you're talking about works both with Windows and Mac? Yes, it does. And Brilliance does work for Windows and Mac. Because if you go over to their website, when I was talking about getting the download, it had the download for the Mac, and it also had the download for the Windows, okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, but like I said, you know, um, don't, you know, Look at look at Hatch. Hatch is another is another software. Hatch, Sewa Pro, and and this one in Brilliance. You know what I'm saying? If you if you're a Windows user, I have to tell you I'm a little jealous because you guys have better options in picking a embroidery software. I went to in Brilliance because I'm a Mac person. Okay, and you know even though I like I said I could have put Windows on my Mac. Okay, because I think they have some software to have kind of like Windows running on your Mac. So that way you can buy Windows applications. 
I just didn't want to do that. I know my husband has that on his Mac, but I didn't want to do that. So I just figured I'll just use Umbrella and, and it seemed to be easy for me to understand. So, you know, but yes, if you are interested in getting um, in Brilliance and you have a Windows machine, it works fine with a Windows machine and it works with Macs as well. Um, so that's the whole reason why I got it. But I wanted to show you also, I'm going to move, is that, is that all the questions so far? Well, we have Wilma Misla. She wants to know uh -huh. if the Brilliance works for all machines. Okay. It works for Windows and it works for Mac. It will not work um, with a Chromebook. I do not believe it works with a Chromebook. Okay. Um, one of the things that I recommend that you do also before you spend your money, okay, if you find a particular software that you like, it doesn't hurt to call them and let them know this is the machine that I have, especially if it doesn't specifically say that. Like, I know some people have Chromebooks, right? Um, it, I, no, it does not work there. Now, I, I don't know if in Brilliance has plans in the future to try to make this um, available to work in Chromebooks, but, you know, it doesn't hurt to ask and stuff. But I do know that this does work on Windows machines and Mac machines. So she's referring to the embroidery machines. Does it work oh, with all embroidery machines? Okay. What what this software does is it creates the embroidery files for you. Now, one of the things that is great about embroidery software is that when you create the file, you can create the file with the extension that you need for the embroidery machine. For instance, if you have a brother machine, you need your embroidery uh, files to have a PES format, right? Not a problem. You can save it as that. Or if you have a Viking, okay, you need it to be saved with the extension, I think it's H H H U S. Okay. Not a problem. Okay. Now I'm gonna add in brilliance in here. Let me let me let's go back to in brilliance. Um, no, I'm sorry, my in brilliance software, because I want to show you, okay. Um if I do a file save as working, okay, you can right here. I want you to see this, okay? Look, I just knocked down here. Notice how it has PS, DS, HUS, Jeff, so files, tap. So you, any of these formats that you need, it will save it as, okay? So if you have brother machines and you need PS or you need a DST or a HUS, um, I know I, I don't know what the other extensions are used for. I don't know what Melco machines use or um, Rokoma. Um, I know uh, the crafty Puerto Rican, she has a Rokoma. She seems to be really happy with her Rokoma. She is, she's rocking that machine. So I don't know what extension files those machines use. Um, I know Harmony, Harmony um, has a uh, Melco. I don't know what extensions they use, but I know she uses in Brilliance also. And I think the Crafty Puerto Rican uses um, in Brilliance as well too. So, um, but just to give you a peek, if you look on my screen right now, I have them all up. These are all the file extensions that when you create an embroidery file, this is what you can save it as, okay? And we have the signs by Chico. And he wants to know, is digitizing program good on in brilliance? That I cannot honestly tell you. Now, I am going to tell you what I've heard and what I've read, you know, the word on the street, okay? The word on the street is I noticed that a lot of people are using Hatch for digitizing, okay? Some people do use in brilliance, but um, a lot of people, for some reason, they are very attracted to the Hatch software. Okay. Now, I in brilliance for me works. I'm not a digitizer. I can fix a file. Okay. I can, you know, I can play around with it and I can manipulate it so that I can make it look the way I want. But I am not a digitizer. I, I don't take um pictures import them and just create files from scratch 
I actually hire digitizers to do that for me. Um, I am just really more a of a uh, 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 embroidery manipulator, let's say, okay, where I just like to, you know, take two images and I'll merge them together or, you know, put text on stuff and, you know, create my own files in that way. But if like you were to come to me and you give me a, um, a logo or something that you want me to digitize, what I'll do is I usually have people that, you know, I work with and they're the ones that actually digitize it with me. Now, um, the ones that I usually work with that digitize, I believe the software that they use is Hatch. I think Hatch, if, if digitizing is where you really want to go, I would urge you to take a look at that software. Also, I would urge you, if you want to learn about digitizing, um, look up John Deere on YouTube, okay? He's like the like world master of digitizing, all right? That guy has won so many awards for digitizing, and he also teaches people how to digitize also. So he is very, very, very good. So it's just, um, you know, that... If that's something that you're looking for, I highly recommend go that route. All right. Um, you know, look at look up John Deere. Um, and let me tell you something too. When you look at John Deere, he doesn't just talk about hatch software, he also talks about other embroidery software, also. And when you want to learn digitizing, he doesn't just teach you how to digitize in hatch. He teach he, you know, he can teach you how to digitize using in brilliance and all the other software programs that are out there also. So, you know, um, John Deere is the best place to start. I would recommend looking at his videos and, um, you know, see what he says. And also do do a search on Don, John Deere and Hatch, John Deere and, and Brilliance. I believe he even has his own website where he has his own courses, where he does digitizing 101. And then you can say, okay, how do you want to learn digitizing 101? Do you want to learn learn it using Hatch? Do you want to learn learn it using in Brilliance? Okay, so you know, I hope that helps a little bit and stuff. But um, okay, so anyway, um, I I used um, oh god, I lost track. <laughs> okay, so anyway, we're talking about in Brilliance. So um, okay, so. This is another uh, software, I mean, software file that I bought, and it's a Christmas ornament. So like I said, when you buy these files, they have these funky names, right? So as you see, it's, it's a Christmas ornament that I can personalize. And then when I go over to my, um, to here, what, a, what they, they did was this was the name that they gave it, which was RPE-2926. So what I usually do is I rick I, I rick right click on it. Y'all know my English is bad, okay? And then what I will do is I will call personalize Christmas ornament. Okay, that way I know that if I'm looking for Christmas ornaments to personalize, that is the folder that I look at. Okay. Um, so is there more questions? No, it's um, Veronica Marcus um, is emphasizing that Brilliance has a 90 day refund policy. Yep, there you go. And also, there's a question about the HUS format. Uh huh. And they want to know if it works for the SE1900. No, HUS format does not work for the SE1900. Okay. Now, all brother machines is whether it's the um SC1900, the PE800, the um PE600, uh SC625 or brother multi needles, um the 670E, the 10 1050 or 1055X. If you have a brother embroidery machine, you need that file to be PES, okay? The H HUS is for Viking Hus, uh, Viking embroidery machines. Okay, so no. Um, now let's say though that you have a file and it's a Hus, 
and you need it to be a PS. And in brilliance, you can open that file and then you do a save as, and then you put the extension PS. Then when you save it, you can use that file on your brother machine, the one that you saved as a PS. Okay. So if you have, if, if you accidentally purchase, because that's happened to me, where sometimes I've gone to a website, I clicked wrong, and you know, I needed something to be a PS because I have brother machines. I bought wrong, you know, I, I bought once, I think it was a TST, something like that. But I was like, I didn't worry about it. I opened it up in, in Brilliance. The file looked great. Then I just went, I did a file save as, and then I saved it in a PES format, and that was able to um, go on my brother machine, and I was able to stitch it out just fine. So, you know, um, so if you have a HUS and you, you have a PES 19 and you do have in Brilliance or you know someone that has in Brilliance, all you have to do is just have them convert it for you and you're good to go. Okay. All right. So, um, just, okay. So I was talking about the files and stuff like that. Now, um, let me show you also some of the things that I really, really love, um, about in Brilliance. Like I was saying, um. And a lot of times what I do is I like to take uh, certain files and I like to, um, you know, bring them together. So let me see if I can um, open up some files and show you exactly like what I mean. OK. Um, and of course, always I'm going to end up. Uh, here we go. Here's a Christmas tree. This is so cute. OK. Oh, I really, I forgot I had this file. This is really cute. I should put this on a dinner napkin. Anyway, <laughs> I forgot I had it. All right. So let's say I have this file and I want to add um, something in here. Like maybe I want to add my name or something like that, right? So what I would do is I would click on the name. And then as you see, it has ABC on there. But let's say I want to put uh, Jeanette across, right? Um but I'm going to make it fancy here, all right? Um, let me pick a fancy font, something thick that we can actually see, and then I'll change the color also so that it can be a little more clear so you guys can see what I'm doing. Um, all right, here's Jeanette, and then, okay, it's on a blue. All right, so, you know, as you can see, this is a file on top of a file. And a lot of times, um, usually what you do is if you look at it, if you look at the bottom, You'll see right here where my mouse is, it says stitches. I have 3,023 stitches on this file, right? One of the things that I like about one of the modules is they have the dentistry repair kit. What it does is it, uh, it helps you take away overlapping stitches and tries to, you know, get rid of unnecessary stitches. And when you buy that, you're going to get these two icons. And here I have like a little vacuum cleaner, right? And it says clean up stitches. And then the one next to it, it has a project advisor. And I really like these two features. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to hit the vacuum cleaner, okay? And hit that. And as you can see, after I hit the vacuum cleaner, my stitches went down, okay? It went from, I'm sorry, it was 30,000 and something before. Now it's at 28,000, okay? So as you can see, what it does is it kind of cleans up. So what it did was takes care of some of the stitches that really shouldn't really have to stitch, right? Another thing that I do is I also hit this project advisor right here. That's the little question mark that's right next to the... Uh, the vacuum cleaner and one of the things that you can do here is you can set the type of project that you're going to be doing okay so like i like to do um bath towels or sometimes i'll put things on dinner napkins so like let's say i'm going to do something on linen or something i can click linen and then here what it'll do is it'll kind of tell you a little bit about the thread weight that you should be using, um, the type of backing that you should be using and stuff. And then let's say that I want to change that. I can also talk about the um, the the fabric. Okay. Do I have a light, light uh, fabric? Is it heavy or is it thick? I can adjust that. 
And as I adjust it, you know, also the, does the, the fabrics, does it have a light or does it stretch a lot? Um, maybe it has a light stretch. And it, and as I, I, I select the type of, of fabric and the fabric thickness or the stretch, it kind of changes the recommendations, okay? So as you can see, when I said that it had a light stretch, it changed the back into a fusible tearaway uh, um, recommendation. So if I went and I just changed this and I said it didn't have any, as you see, the, the backing recommendation is just plain tearaway. So this is a pretty cool, um, cool feature and stuff that I like to, to look at. All right. So it's just something that, you know, that I always like to do whenever I'm embroidering something. I always like to look at the project recommendation because I want to make sure that, you know, I'm using the most recommended um, backing, um, the, 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 the right stabilizer, the right thread, the right thread weight. And, and so forth whenever I'm trying to embroider. I hope I'm making sense to you guys. I know I'm throwing a lot and I'm kind of like going all over the place. But as you guys know, I like to do my videos raw. I don't really sometimes do an agenda and all that kind of stuff. I just like to just talk and just tell you guys what I know and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, but, um, you know, another thing that I like about um, in Brilliance 2 is the steps. If you look over to the right, okay, it tells you the kind of steps of each pieces of the embroidery, right? It has this little uh, little uh, arrow right here. When I click on it, you can look at each of the steps. And what it does is it tells you what step is embroidery. And these are things that you can just delete. Like, let's say right here, the embroidery red. Let's say I don't want the little red stuff all over there. I could just um, highlight that step and I can delete that. And as you can see, look, all the red bowls are gone. So that means that I can, like, you know, because let's say that I just wanted, um, you know, just the gold ones. I could just delete that. What happened? Okay. Miss Wilma, Miss Wilma wants to know uh -huh. if. If she wants to have an initial, could they do emboss and top the initial? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, emboss. Let's talk about that. On the tree, for example. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what she's talking about. Oh, okay. All right. You can't, I don't know why you would want to do it, but let's, let's play with this so you can see, okay? All right, so. Let's do an initial. All right, let's do the letter J here. I'm gonna pick a nice J. You know, my favorite font from Stitchtopia. I'm gonna pick that, okay? My little script thing. I, I love this font. It never steers me wrong. Okay, here we go. Letter J. And, oh, I'm gonna do a capital J. And then let me change the color so that you guys can see it. Um, you know, I got rid of all the red bulbs, right? So I'm going to do a red J. All right, so here it is. So it's right here. Now, um, it's a Christmas tree. Um, now, I have a Brilliance uh, Essentials, right? I mean, not Essentials, Enthusiast, okay? That's another module of Enthusiast that you can buy. Let's say you have this letter and you want it, you, you want it to, like, raise up. You can add knockdown stitches, which is under utilities, and you click on knockdown stitches. Now, I would hit OK, and as you can see, I'm going to take away this tree so that you can see it. But see right here, there you go. See, this is the knockdown stitches, all right? Now, as you can see right here, you have an underlay, all right? You look on the on the right hand side. Look at number one. Number one is the underlay. The underlay is and look. I'm going to move the letter J. See this white spot right here. This is the underlay. This is the knockdown stitches that was added underneath the text. Okay, so I'm going to put this right back here. Okay, all right. So you can't do that. Um, let's say you want to do that here. Now, the only thing that I will tell you, though, is I'm going to be honest, I don't think it would look right, okay? Because, first of all, not with this design, all right? But um, I, I think it would look a little, uh, 
I'm just gonna say it's gonna look funky. I, I think it's gonna look funky. You know why? Because look, the the way that the the design is, see, it's like this, right? And the thing is, you know, this. Well, I don't know. It just when you know what you could do. This is an idea. You can make this smaller. And then you know how people put a little star on the top? Well, here's the underlay. And if you notice, there's two pieces of underlay. The and, and Oh, and for those of you that want to know, why do you have two pieces of underlay under there, Jeanette? This is bi-directional. You can do your knockdown stitches in two ways. You can have it going down one way, or you can have it stitching bi-directional. Now, bi-directional means it stitches one way and then it goes the other way, all right? Now, let me show you something right here, okay? Let's take this. I'm gonna take the Christmas tree out. I'm gonna take all this out. Let's let's talk about this for a minute, okay? Let's, let's do this again because I really want you guys to, to, to understand this because this is really good. Um, and it's a, pref it's a preference. It, it works the same to me, okay? But let me show you, okay. I'm gonna do utility, add knockdown stitches. Now gonna move this right here see how here it says bi-directional okay i can unclick this and if i unclick this and i say okay there you go as you can see it's only one underlay look over here it's just you know one underlay now let's stitch this because i want you to see how this is going to stitch and this is one of the things that i really like about in brilliance too see this little needle right here Click on this, and then you have this little pointy thing right here. Now, let's start stitching, and let's see how the embroidery machine is going to create this file. Now, as you can see, here goes the needle. Here you go. And notice how it's going one direction, right? This is your underlay. This is where the J is going to go ahead, and it's going to stitch. And notice how the, the, the needle is only going in one way. It stopped, right? Now, guess what? Now it's going ahead and it's going to start stitching the J. Okay? So that is one directional. Okay? And see? Came out like that. Now, let's take this out and let's, let's add it again. Okay? Let me take out the underlay here. Okay, let me just take the whole thing out. All right, let's start this whole thing all over again. Let's take this out of here. All right, there we go. I'm going to add my J again, okay? Now, this time what I'm going to do under utilities, I'm going to do add knockdown stitches, right? Now, I'm going to click on bi-directional, okay? And I'm going to hit OK. All right, now I want to click on here, and you notice there's one step under the underlay, two steps under the underlay. Now let's do let's run the the simulator so that you can see the two directional. All right, so as you can see, here we go again. It's doing it the way it was doing it before, right? See, it's all one way. Now I want you to pay attention. Now look what's happening. Now it's going the other way. See how see how it's going the other way? It's stitching on top, but in the other direction. Now, this is what I would do. And then see, now it's doing this. Now it's doing the initial. All right. Now, question. When would you do bi-directional versus just doing one way underlay. I would advise using the bi-directional in a situation where you have a lot of thickness. Like let's say you have a stocking and it's like fur or something, you know, a lot of fur or a lot of fluff, a whole lot of fluff, okay? You want to make sure that your embroidery file never sinks in there. That's when I would say you would go ahead and use the by direct by uh, direction, okay? 
Um, I don't, will it sink if you don't? I don't think so, but I just look at it as a, another, you know, another way to be secure that your stitches stay firm on top. Another thing also, it could also be a preference, all right? Sometimes it looks different. So like, let's, let me go ahead and, and, you know, make this bigger. As you can see, kind of shows like a little pattern, right? Sometimes it's a preference of how you want it to look, okay? I kind of like the bi-directional look, actually, okay? I wish I had kept the other one on there so that you can see. But let me move this over. Yeah, babe, what's up? Okay, Sassy has a question here. Are the knockdown stitches only in the enthusiast mug? Yes. Yes, you get the knockdown stitches when you um in the in the uh in in the enthusiast module. Yes, that is correct. Um, and this is another thing too. While we're talking, well, let me let me look at. Hold on, because I I want to show you guys this. But uh, let's look at pricing too, okay, guys? Let me. I want to add the knockdown stitches here because I want to I want to see a comparison on this. And let's do an up close, okay? There we go. All right. The one here on the left is bi-directional. Did you see? Oh, 10 minutes left. Okay. Do you see how that, see how this stitches? Okay. See how the pattern looks? This one is one directional. And look how it looks. Let me go a little further. Oh, that's a little too much. You see how the you see how it looks? So as you can see, it kind of looks a little stylish, like a little different, right? So this the one on the left is where I have bi-directional, where it's stitched on one on one side, then it went in to stitch on the other, and then it went in and put the initial on top. And then the one on the right side is just the single. It didn't do bi-directional. It just went ahead and stitched in one side and stuff like that. So you know, you, you just get two different looks. To be honest, though, um, you know, they they both do the same job. They they both do. OK, I just personally think that, you know, if it's something like super thick and has a lot of fur, stuff like that, that I would do the bi-directional just to make sure that it's it's solid. OK, that's just that's just me and stuff. And I got 10 minutes left. Um, let me go now to the Embrilliance website because I wanted to talk more about the uh software okay in brilliance let's look at this price stuff okay question before you start uh -huh. would the bi-directional be too dense and make it pearl it could be dense yes now like i said it depends on your material also so um oh did i did i shut it down no i did okay what you can do is you can click on this and because i have the um the the dense rip uh the repair kit i can click on here on the question mark and it can give me a uh you know a recommendation okay um and i can click on this but you you are right with the bi-directional you are making it very thick, very dense, uh, you know, but it depends. Now, would I recommend bi bi-dimensional something that's very thin? No. And, and to be honest, if you have something that's very, very thin, I don't even know why you would even add knockdown stitches, honestly. Um, you know, unless you just want it to be decorative, you just want a, a, a different color background and stuff. Because remember, it doesn't have to be white. You can change those stitches any color you want, you know. Um, just to give it a little pop look and stuff. Um, I just use knockdown stitches whenever I have very thick material, okay? Material where um, there's a lot of fluff on it, okay? Where I need th those fibers to be down so that it doesn't, you know, when I start embroidering, the stitches don't get lost in there, even after washing. Because that's the other thing too. Be aware of that that sometimes you could be um, embroidering something and even though you use the soluble topping and you know it looks beautiful when you're finished, how is that going to look after somebody puts it in the washing machine, okay? 
that soluble top topping dissolves and then you know those fibers move is that going is that embroidery design going to stay intact so whenever i see that there's a lot of fluff that is where i go to my knockdown stitches and that's when i go to the embossed files so do you need essentials first before getting enthusiastic yes it is recommended yes yes the the first module that you should buy whenever you're using in brilliance um is essentials okay and um after essentials then if you want knockdown stitches you i would say um then you would get enthusiasts now another thing though okay so, uh, i keep telling people you know because some people think oh god i gotta spend all this money because let me tell you something embroidery is not cheap okay embroidery is not cheap i mean think about it you're buying the machine the threads the stabilizer now the software now it's like oh god now comes the cost of the software you can go ahead and you can get embossed files embossed files is another option that is available to you and these are the files that i'm talking about let's go over um to uh to etsy i'm i'm just going to show you what embossed files embroidery look like um this is something that is um did I spell that right? I don't think I did. I don't think I spelled it right. There you go. All right. Look at these files. If you want, this is another option. Okay. You know, because I believe in giving people options because, you know, I mean, you know, money's money. Okay. You, you guys got to save your money. All right. So if you want to get enthusiasts, you, I mean, you can. Okay but if you're tight hell here's an option same thing look you can buy files like these okay they're embossed and all you have to do is you have in brilliance essentials use this file type in the, the the font and just put it on top and then you embroider it that's it look you get squares you get triangles circles ovals and look a whole set that's very inexpensive. That's not, that's not much. So Marion Allison wants to know what website do you buy knockdown already made forms? I bought mine from Etsy. Just what I'm showing you right now, embossed. Um, let me see. Where did I get my files? I bought them a while ago. But let me see if I can find them for you guys and I can show you. Um, Karen Bretzenberg wants to know, she just bought Ethusias and never bought the first one. So is she missing something by not having the essentials? I really don't. I don't know. I can't, I can't answer that question. I've always, I always bought essentials first. So I don't know how in brilliance would work if you just owned enthusiasts and never bought essentials um you know i would play around with it see what happens and then reach out to the support um well, somebody responded Michelle oh they did yeah karen now it comes with the first one it comes with oh so maybe it comes with maybe maybe you you buy it together i don't know Okay, well, I, this is, okay, well, the question about where I got my embossed frames, I, as you see on the website, I got them from Boutique Fonts on Etsy, and um, I paid $8, and they were great. I mean, and um, here's another file that I got, and look at, these are the files that came with it. Okay, and these are the files that came with it. Okay, and look, even though it has these colors, remember, it's your thread. You can change it to whatever color you want, okay? So um, I got two minutes left. Mm. My throat is killing me, guys. Okay, so I am going to um, get out of here and remove this, and I am going back on here. Man, okay, I know I was just doing this on the wing, guys, you know, and stuff. And I always like saying hi to you guys and everything. So I'm going to go down. Let me go through. Hey, Eve, how you doing? Hey, Mary. Hey, Linda Woods, how are you? 
Hey, Sassy, Iris, Renee, I see Norma, Karen, Wilma. Hey, Karen and Robin. Hey, I love my handmade stuff. Well, um, hey, Miss Crafty Creations. Hey, Robin. Hey, Angela, Michelle, Miriam. I see Carol, Norma. Norma, I got to reach out to you, girl, because uh, I'll be going to Florida again, so we're going to have to catch up again. Hey, um, Teresa, I mean, uh, Trisha, uh, I'm telling you, I'm bad. Hey, Sylvia, I see Namek, Lucy, Tracy, Michelle, Rhonda. Hey, Miss Z, how are you? How you doing? And so, so, um, yeah, I hope I answered all of you guys questions i know i do things on the fly you know i'm just not the type that you know go the agenda and all that kind of stuff i like to keep it natural eh, what the heck you know <laughs> and stuff but i hope the information that i gave you guys today about and brilliance is pretty uh is what i showed you and i wanted to show you this too i just did this one this is one with the ornaments i wanted to put this on my shop um i thought it was pretty cute and then here's another one that I did with metallic thread. Oh, my God. So if you guys see Harmony, make sure you let her know. Boy, she got me hooked on the metallic thread. Um, I did the Christmas tree. I I think it's okay. It's not, you know, I have to admit that the tree, it looks nice, but it's not something where I'm like, ooh, you know. <laughs> it's kind of like, eh, it's okay, you know. <laughs> my cousin likes it. I but love it. She likes it. Okay, so. <laughs> Got a whole set on my dining table. Oh my god! Well, anyway, I Gorgeous. guess I gotta Long make her one. Okay. Well, I, I just I don't know. It just doesn't pop. It does. See, I, when I like to embroider something, I like it to pop. I like it to yeah. slap me in the face, like just see wow. Why. But and Linda Woods wants to know where did you get the designs for Christmas? Oh, where did I get this design for Christmas? You know. All right, I think I got it off of Etsy. I, I believe so. Hold on, let me find out for you. Hold on, I am going to, let me find out for you. Because I, I believe I got this off of Etsy. Um, Lucy Ricardo wants to know if you will make a video, a video, another video regarding metallic thread. Oh, I can. I can make another one. Oh, yeah. Now for the holidays, that will be great okay i can i can do that i can do that let me see the christmas tree christmas tree okay i got it from lily's embroidery okay it's l-i-l-y-s embroidery and that is where i got this one from this 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 one from um and stuff and you know what i'll do let me let me type it in here for you so that way you know exactly where i got it from um embroidery it's an etsy shop um cute cute shop i mean let me tell you they got some really 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 nice stuff um you know um it's cute i mean it's all right i mean it just doesn't you know you know what it is i my my thing is when i embroider i like things to be like unique unique i, I it's gotta slap me in the face like bang you know like whoa this is like woo, you know <laughs> and and this is nice don't get me wrong it could be that maybe it's just too small or maybe it's because to me i just used one color uh i don't know maybe maybe um putting an initial at the bottom or something like that or i don't know I, I just like things to be, um, I like I like my stuff to be different, unique, you know, which is why I, I called my shop Unique Designs for You because I, I like things that it's similar, but it's got that unique taste to it and especially personalized stuff, you know, um, you know, like I did a, a towel for my cousins, right? And I did it with a coffee cup with a Puerto Rican flag. I'll show you this one this one did not come out right okay and this is something that i learned the hard way i was rushing and i'm gonna blame that okay oh, yes i'm gonna blame i'm gonna blame 
cousin Betty because she was brushing. Okay, she was breathing down my neck. She was like, how do you do that? So, so I couldn't focus. I couldn't focus. So now, nah, seriously though, it was my fault. What happened was I had the design on top of a design. And I saw that the um, embroidery machine was embroidering like real, real thick. Then I noticed when it came to the name, I wasn't paying attention. But for some reason, the, the font, I don't know if the font is no good, the one that I bought, or if I kind of messed up the font when I was resizing it, okay? But what really ticked me off was this whole thing embroidered. And then this was the last thing to embroider. And of course, the last thing to embroider was what messed up. Because of course, naturally, if this started to embroider like this, and I saw that the name was messed up, of course, I'm not going to waste thread and do the rest of it. But I was like, oh, screw it, messed up. So what I did was when I redid the whole design, I asked in, in Brilliance, you can move, you know, I, I moved the fonts to stitch first. So once the names came out perfect, then I had the design stitch out. So, you know, but uh, it's, it was just like, bleh. I was, I was like, really? So, but, you know, Betty did give me an idea. She was like, because this, this portion right here came out really, really nice. And one of the things that Betty was telling me was, why don't I cut it out and I could maybe make a patch or something? because this came out so nice and rich. And I'm like, you know, it's true. And it's kind of shameful to throw it away because of that. So I am going to cut it out. And maybe, I don't know, maybe I could do something like uh, burn the edges off so that way it doesn't fray. And maybe I could use it as maybe like a little sign, a picture, something hang on a wall. You can get a little frame. Yeah, or frame it. There you go. A little frame. A little frame will work. Um, but, you know, she was right because I, I I tossed it. I tossed it in the trash and she took it out and she was like, you know, the bottom is really nice. You should think of something, you know. So and the more she said about it, the more I thought about it. And and I was thinking, you know, this was a lot of threat to throw in the garbage. So I think I'm just going to be creative, like she said, and maybe I will cut it out. And yeah, like she said, put it in a frame or something and use it in some kind of way because it was cute. It, it's just a shame that the names came out all funky, but that's OK. Um, yeah. I was able to redo it. Um, you know, Rolanda Henry says do an applique design over the name. Do a what? Please. Application design. Oh, over the name. Over the name. A mug. You're oh, people, right. Look, all the suggestions here. Yeah, a mug rug, or as an application for something. You're right. Yeah, Just and like a patch. And I a patch. I can do a patch here. Mm -hmm. The teamwork. There you go. There you go. Thank you guys. Yeah, I'm glad I'm glad that Betty pulled it right back out of the trash. Cause I, I just I just cut it and I just tossed it and put it in the trash. And she was like, mm, do that. She just took it, took it out. And I was like, What are you saving that for? And she's like, do something with it. Yeah, because it came out cute. The, the cup came out really, really cute and stuff. So, you know, but um yeah, Karen Co says an applique. An applique for pillow for vets. An applique for pillows for vets. Yep. That's called applique, not a peak. Oh, I, I I read it like French. Oh, okay. In French? Yeah, I speak a little French. Oh, she's a little French. Okay. <laughs> I speak I speak Spanglish. <laughs> New Yorker Spanglish. <laughs> Okay, guys. Well, yeah, you know, well, a lot of options, you guys. Thank you so much. And so because of you, I read all the design reviews prior to purchasing. I learned my lesson when one of my designs stitched out horribly. Yeah, Lucy. I mean, seriously, yeah. I mean, and you know, and this is the other thing too. Please think about this, okay? There's a lot of people out there that sometimes they do digitize embroidery files and then they sell them on Etsy. 
sometimes not everybody is a you know i'm not saying they're bad bad digitizers but a lot of times people are just learning how to digitize and they just haven't mastered it yet digitizing is not easy okay i'm telling you it is not i tried learning um and even learning with john deere but actually digitizing is not my thing i love i'm an operator i love love embroidery i love uh, messing with the machines, putting the products in there and watching the magic happen to sit in front of the computer and actually design it. I mean, you know, I'm an IT specialist by trade. OK, that's my career. Um, I'm tired of looking at monitors and I am tired of keywording. Like, I don't want to do that. I want to work with the machine. OK, that's my passion. But the thing is, you you know, you do have to as a good uh machinist you know and knowing your embroidery you do have to know a little bit about digitizing also at least know the basics okay but you know not all embroiderers are good so you know you have to test designs okay you know just because you buy it you know and just because they have it listed on on etsy and because you buy it doesn't mean that you know it's perfect right Mello? we have to test them so um you know just something heads up just something for you guys to um think about right boo boo right boo boo he was so good today he didn't bark or anything even though he was playing with his squeaky toy before we started and he stopped oh he's such a good dog anyway we love you Mello. we do you're so sweet oh he's so cute so anyway guys all right so it is past nine o'clock and I know that the last two Fridays, I like talked a lot, okay? I am hoping that um, the information that I provide to you guys was useful, okay? Um, you know, as always, I, you know, I love spending all my Friday evenings with you guys. And every time, you know, I talk with you guys, one of the things that I always wanna do is at least leave you with some valuable information to help you perfect your craft a little you know more and more as as you start to practice and all that kind of stuff and just share stuff with you guys so um you know um i hope you guys enjoyed it if you did please give it a thumbs up if you're new to my channel i welcome you to please subscribe also um if you like please join our facebook group is um embroidery happy hour adventures it's a great group with lots of support um you know i love watching um people you know help each other and also share all of the projects that they're working on um and you know i also wanted to thank so many people i have about 30 people that participated in this year's um embroidery happy hour gift exchange i'm really excited um all the gifts need to be mailed out by december 11th um so that way it beats all the christmas rushes and stuff like that i am really looking forward to seeing what everybody makes each other and if this goes really well i'm hoping to host um that event on an annual basis every year so anyway guys as always um it was a pleasure spending friday with you guys Please be safe and hope you guys enjoyed um, tonight's um, video, okay? So mm -hmm. I'll talk to you guys later and have a great night. So um, please take care and please be safe. And I'll see you guys again next Friday at 8 o'clock. So happy Bye. sewing and embroidery. Bye.